We're learning more about the gunman who walked up to a police cruiser in Brooklyn yesterday and opened fire, killing two New York City police officers. Authorities say the gunman had made threats against police online just before the ambush. Wendy Gillette has more now from New York. Hundreds of New York City police officers saluted an ambulance carrying one of their fallen brothers as it left a Brooklyn hospital. Police say a man identified as 28-year-old Ismail Brinsley walked up to this patrol car and shot two officers in the head, execution style, Saturday afternoon. They were quite simply assassinated, targeted for their uniform. The suspect ran to a nearby subway station where he shot and killed himself. Police say Brinsley was on the run after shooting and injuring his ex-girlfriend in Baltimore Saturday morning. They believe he posted to her Instagram account just three hours before killing the officers. The caption reads, I'm putting wings on pigs today. They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs. Shoot the police. R.I.P. Eric Garner. R.I.P. Mike Brown. This may be my final post. The shooting in Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood happened in front of a housing project just two minutes after the NYPD received a fax from Baltimore police warning them that Brinsley may be headed to New York. Every New Yorker should feel they too were attacked. Our entire city was attacked by this heinous individual. The officers were identified as 40-year-old Rafael Ramos, who leaves behind a wife and a 13-year-old son, and 32-year-old Wenjian Lu, who was married just two months ago. They were on special assignment, helping to control crime in housing projects. Wendy Gillette for CBS News, Brooklyn, New York. And President Obama issued a statement late last night saying he condemned the killings. Meanwhile, the head of the New York Police Union suggested, quote, there is blood on many hands. And he pointed a finger both at the mayor as well as protesters. It's been a tense time for the NYPD as there have been ongoing demonstrations over the failure to indict an officer for the chokehold death of Eric Garner. And there was a protest last night here in Nashville. On one of the busiest shopping days of the year, a group held a rally inside the mall at Green Hills, protesting the grand jury decisions in the cases involving Eric Garner as well as Michael Brown. Yesterday's protest came a week after a similar protest at the Opry Mills Mall. And as in last week's protest, security officers at the mall escorted the protesters last night, making sure things didn't get out of hand inside. Several times the group performed so-called die-ins inside the mall, laying down and playing dead to get att attention of shoppers passing by. Well, it's pretty much just to inconvenience people. Um, um, black and brown people have been inconvenienced by a whole host of things in this country. Um, and so inconveniencing people um, during their time when they're shopping is, is, is small in comparison to what um, black and brown people have faced. So. After leaving the mall, the group continued their protest outside on Hillsborough Road with some people even laying down in the middle of the street. The group left before police made any arrests. Meanwhile, a similar, albeit much larger, demonstration yesterday afternoon at the Mall of America in Minnesota ended with as many as 25 arrests. Thousands gathered in the mall's rotunda to raise awareness about police brutality and racial profiling. The group chanted Black Lives Matter and passed out pamphlets. While the country's largest shopping mall was put on partial lockdown during the protest, police say most of the arrests were for things like trespassing. There is still time to get down to the 61st Avenue United Methodist Church for their last minute toy store. The annual event helps families in need provide Christmas for their children. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres is at the church now, and this is a really neat thing for families in the community. Uh, and a lot of people have turned out this year, but there's still space for more, I understand, Matthew. Yeah, no, Jennifer, there are still a lot of tickets available. When it, the doors first opened at 6.30, there were about 450 available. This room was packed with people, but as you can see now, it has emptied out. People are still filing their way in, just hanging out. But right now, if people are still uh, interested for the last-minute toy store, there are just less than 250 tickets available, and they will stay out here in the room at the 61st Avenue United Methodist Church until all tickets are gone. Now, once they get their tickets, they are asked to come back in the afternoon where they will open up at 1.30 until 6.30 and that's when all the toys are available for the family to pick up. Now these are the necessary items and documents to provide. Even though you got your ticket, you have to provide these in order to get the toys. One is a parent or guardian's picture ID. Two is to make sure you have a proof of residency in Davidson County. Another is something official showing children 
victim's name and date of birth, and finally, some sort of proof of income. So make sure to have all four of those documents by 1.30 or this afternoon when you do plan out. So this is the last day. So again, less than 250 tickets available. But as you can see, people are now setting up uh, for people to uh, check out the toys. And again, for the last day so far, it's been a success. That's it for now. We are reporting live in West Nashville. Matthew Torres, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Matthew, thank you. An arrest has been made in connection with a burglary earlier this month at a Jersey Mike's in Hendersonville. David Griffin surrendered to authorities early this morning. Police say Griffin, a former employee at the store, was caught stealing from the business by the owner on December 16th. When the owner called police, Griffin took off. He is expected in court later this month, or later next month, that is, to face burglary and theft charges.